Now, your forecast first, sponsored by City Mattress. Good evening. We've got a pretty nice looking sky for you. Can't beat that. As we get into the next couple of hours, we'll watch that temperature hover in the 70s. There we go. 70, 80 degrees right now. It's a nice night. We've got rain on the way, though. That coming up on my full forecast. And coming up, a popular fundraiser might disappear as gun laws tighten and in Monroe County. Coverage under our promised insurance was terminated. Local retired sheriffs protest a major change in their medical coverage. From the team you can trust, this is News 8 at 6. A protest took place today at the Menden Town Hall with the Sheriff's Office of Retirees over what they say is the elimination of health care benefits. They blame the county. The county weighed in saying it just isn't so. Uh, I was shocked that the county would actually do such a thing. Former Sheriff's Deputy Robert Keough, who served for 24 years, says all his health care benefits were eliminated in January of 2018. Once we became eligible for Medicare, all of our coverage under our promised insurance was terminated. Keough says they were then just left with Medicare, which they continue to pay for. He says the power to change this rests with the county executive and the county legislature. The members of the Sheriff's Office Association of Retirees are serious about regaining the benefits we were promised. The county says in a statement this is a complex issue and that members of SOAR have not lost coverage. In 2017, the county enhanced Medicare options to retirees. Instead of paying $1.2 million in fees, that's now invested into HRA accounts to help retirees cover expenses. Also, all retirees are still protected by the same free Medicare coverage they had before. They encourage anyone with questions to visit MonroeRetirees.com. All we want is the benefits restored that we were promised. We did reach out to Todd Baxter at the Sheriff's Office and Carla Boyce, the local legislator there, for comment. We have not heard back yet. And customers are stocking up before the inspections and fines for the ban on flavored e-cigarette products go into effect. End Vape and Smoke Supply on Buffalo Road marked down their inventory to get products off the shelves. Governor Andrew Cuomo announced the decision to ban the flavored e-cigarettes on Tuesday, citing an increase in vaping among young teens and the recent deaths tied to vaping as the reason for the move. But people who use the products worry it'll make them go back to regular cigarettes. Consumers are scared at this point, which is why we're doing the event today. Uh, they've used uh, flavors to successfully transition from combustible cigarettes. Uh, we're here to still provide that while we can for them. The State Department of Health called the high numbers of vaping among teens a, quote, public health crisis. Seven vaping-related deaths have been reported this year. A New York senator has introduced a state ban on gun raffles. This worries one local fire department who relies on their annual gun raffles to secure money. They had a raffle today, and reporter Atia Collins was there to gather reaction on the proposed ban. The Hamlin Fire Department is holding their gun raffle. They say events like this help raise funds while also bringing the community together. But a bill introduced on the state level is looking to end raffles like this one. The Hamlin Fire Department is volunteer. They do not receive money from taxes that go to the district. Without fundraisers like this, the department would have no way to pay for building space, electricity, or department bills. If that legislation passed, about a quarter of our department operating budget would be lost to us. A Long Island senator who introduced the bill said in a release, you shouldn't be able to simply walk into a catering venue and walk out owning a firearm. This law will protect public safety and advance New York's commitment to common sense gun reform. But the gun raffle is, like you said, far more efficient. Uh, we need fewer people. We need a fewer amount of time. And uh, because the tickets are mostly sold pre-sale uh, or before the event, we know right now that we're going to be making money. But some at the rally believe the focus should be on education. I think that's half the problem. You have to respect the weapon and know how to use it and know how to put it away and keep it away from children. It's also a community event. People come together, so 
So I fully support the concept of continuing with firearms. I agree with the background checks for the mental health issues, but to ban them in terms of uh, fundraisers is just so absurd. Here at this raffle, anyone who wins a gun will have to complete a background check and pick it up at a local dealer. This is one way fire department officials say they are keeping residents safe. In Hamlin, News 8, Atia Collins. Currently, there are no votes for this bill in the legislative session. One family is displaced after a fire tore through a home in Hamlin today. Firefighters arrived to 12 Railroad Avenue and found smoke and flames coming from inside. Everyone made it out safely and no one was injured. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Across the country, people gathered to protest President Trump's administration and call for his impeachment. We the People marches took place in over 60 cities, including Washington, D.C. In Rochester, protesters gathered at the Liberty Pole downtown. They are calling on Congress to move forward with impeaching President Trump and feel it's their duty to hold him accountable. It's time for our representatives to start listening to the people and not to all the money that's going in from lobbyists. At least if something happens, I will be able to rest knowing that I've done anything that I can do. The march was followed by an activism fair connecting people with groups that offer volunteer opportunities. Well, there's a lot of conflicting information out there about the best ways to lose weight. News 8 is putting you first. We'll have medical professionals and a registered dietitian in our studio ready to answer your questions on the best ways to be healthy. That's fad diets and food labels Monday from 5 to 6.30 right here on News 8. You'll remember the 21st of September as being one of the sunniest days of the year. Just look at this. People were hanging out at Cobbs Hill enjoying the warm weather. Here is James with a look at the full forecast and what we can expect for the rest of the weekend. James. Hey, Christian. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous day. Today should be a really nice evening. Last day of the Fringe Festival in Rochester. Temperatures hang in the 70s. We do have a nice moon out there, but of course, the moon rises at 11.35 p.m. We'll start off tomorrow very mild. Normal overnight lows this time of year around 50. We will be in the mid-60s uh, to start off the day. Mostly clear skies. Clouds increase as we get into the afternoon, but otherwise no issue. Diesel, looking forward to the nice warm weather. Uh, thank you, Tony, for sending in that photo. We get in the mid-80s by the afternoon. The record is in the low 90s, so no, the afternoon high will not hit the record, but the overnight lows could be warm to the point where we could see a record high low. Yeah, because the numbers just won't drop, especially tomorrow night. Satellite and radar showing some rain showers across the Ohio River Valley. Those stay there. High pressure helps keep us dry, and we won't see any rain showers, not even until Monday afternoon. There they are. That's the next chance really for rain. So I think we have a spicy Sunday, we'll call it. It's going to be warm in the mid and upper 80s there. Showers for your Monday. Uh, again, off and on and likely not even until late morning and into the afternoon. And then we remain relatively warm. I have warm as an above average, which is 70 for afternoon highs. Hey, Rochester Marathon tomorrow morning starts at 730. Uh, we'll start off in the mid 60s and it will feel like a mid August day for you tomorrow. UV is at six. This is a tricky number here because it's still high, but not extreme. So it could catch up with you. If you spend several hours outside, you'll definitely want to uh, protect your skin there. Of course, we have a uh, Bill's home opener. That's going to be beautiful for that, right? Lower 80s, mostly sunny skies, a hot one there uh, at Orchard Park. I love that. News 8 eight day forecast looking beyond. Of course, fall starts on Monday. We see a drop in temperatures. I did mention the rain showers and then Tuesday we'll see upper 60s, but every day after Tuesday afternoon highs will be in the lower mid, maybe even upper 70s and a dry stretch into next weekend. I'm going to talk it over to Prescott Rossi. Thank you very much, James. You know, Syracuse football fans are used to seeing the orange take some lumps over the years. It happens, but it rarely happens in a year where the orange have expectations. Just two weeks ago, Syracuse was ranked nationally, but since then they've given up 104 points combined to Maryland and Clemson. Well, today the orange got back on the winning track with a 52 33 win over Western Michigan broadcast rules. We can't show the highlights on the web show, but Quarterback Tommy DeVito threw for four touchdowns. Running back Moniel ran in for a pair of scores. So the Orange back in the win column. Now 2-2 two and two this year. Next week they host Holy Cross. 
team they should likely beat. So the Syracuse Orange in a good position to get back on the winning side of 500 in just a week. Now checking local scores. Alfred took one on the chin this afternoon at Ithaca. Saxon's first loss of the year. Hobart gets a game winning field goal from Kyle Hackett as time expired to cap a 17 point comeback win against Rowan. Elsewhere in the college game, Brockport got three passing touchdowns and two rushing touchdowns from former Irondequoit star Freddie June in a big win over Buff State. And St. John Fisher scored 35 straight as the Cardinals tame TCNJ 40 to 16. Let's go to the high school game to the Sacred Acre. Cannon Dagua saying goodbye to Evans Field, the final game at their longtime home. Second half, 14 nothing lead over Brighton, fourth and three. Sam Bennett, head of steam, first down out at the 12. CA in the red zone. Moment later, B Brian Boldrin jumped past to Seth Vigneri. Touchdown makes it 21 0 Braves. Next, Cannon Dagua possession. Boldrin going a bit deeper this time. Connects with Bennett. Gain of 36. First down, CA moving the chains. To the fourth quarter we go. It's Boldrin on the RPO. Skirts in for the final touchdown at Evans Field. Braves. Blank Brighton. 28 to nothing. Greece Arcadia hosting the East High Eagles without seven McGee. Titans inches from the goal line came in Crummity, runs it in for the early lead. Wildcats aren't one to stay quiet for long. Freddie Brock with the wheels. Speeds past Arcadia's defense for the 35 yard touchdown run for the Eagles. And under a minute left in the first half, Anthony Gilbert spots Mike Maxwell. He goes 47 yards to the house. It's been a Quite a week for East High. 93 yards in under 30 seconds. The Eagles hang on to defeat the Titans 26 to 21. And fellas, coming up tonight during News 8 at 11, we will have much more high school football. Football frenzy puts a bow on week three of the Section 5 season. Right, Prescott, thanks so much. Nice weekend. Rest of the weekend coming our way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Enjoy the heat tomorrow. Uh, yeah, will do. James, thanks so much. We'll see you back here at 11. That's it for News 8 at 6, Web Edition. Take care.